Mechanics of Material, Chapter 9, Stress Transformation. We want to solve the principles for, for principal stresses for previous problems. So if we have a sample like if we have a sample which is handling a 80 megapascal like a push on, on X element and 25 downward shear at, at X plane and, and a 50 megapascal pull like a off-bar pull in Y plane and like a 25 megapascal also in like shear stresses we want to know what are the principal and, and their planes so for doing so if you remember from a more circular like what, what we drew last time for x negative 80 a push and a 25 like here and and like a y point like 50 like a pull and negative 25 because that's a counterclockwise goes below the, the x-axis in sigma and the tau shearing diagram and by simply looking the figure you can easily know this is the minimum possible in normal stresses and that's the maximum possible in more circular so we call them principal stresses and if you want to calculate them from more circular, you can easily see uh, how sigma minimum from the formula of, of circular is average minus a radius. Mm -hmm. If you subtract a, a radius from the sigma average, you get to the minimum here. If you just add a radius to the sigma average, and if this is our center of more circular, and this is our origin. This is simply sigma average. So sigma average. First, we can calculate our radius, which is this part. That's sigma x minus sigma one, uh, y over two square plus tau x y square. So this distance square plus this distance our hypotenuse which is r that's our radius and if you just replace by the numeric value all the numeric value are known and it just gives us 69.64 megapascal for our hypotenuse which is our radius of our circle and at the same time sigma average is simply average of two number two stresses is the first one plus the a second one over to negative 80 plus 50 over to just a negative 15 and that's the distance between the origin our origin and our center of more circle which stands for sigma average all the time so that's also in negative x direction so that's a negative 15. now we do have what we do know what our, our rate our radius is and what our sigma average is so if we just place it in the formula it just gives us a this amount in sigma minimum and, and sigma maximum is sigma average plus r which is this part a positive a 54.64 so it just gives us the numeric value of sigma minimum and sigma maximum in terms of megapascal. So this is the sigma minimum circle value, which is negative 84.64 pascal. Sigma maximum is the maximum possible in terms of no stress considering the direction. That's a positive 54.64 megapascal. As soon as we do know what are the numeric value of our principles, we want to know what are the their planes. So if we just make a counterclockwise turn from our sample, like here, can easily reach to to sigma minimum. 
likewise if we just turn like this the other part so that's our external norms either minimum maximum or principal so 2 times theta p is tangent inverse of 25 over 80 okay I bet that's a 25 over 65 that's not 80 anymore total is 80 if you just subtract the 15 from that that's a 65 and it just gives us 2 theta p is equal to 17.35 for 2 theta p and and if you just want to bring it to the sample from more secure you just need one of them so theta p extremums of of principal either minimum or maximum we just need 8.68 degrees of of counterclockwise rotation to get the read of shear stress so if this is our sample and we just rotate it like a Eight point sixty-eight degrees, like clockwise, uh, counterclockwise. We reach to a state of stress which we only experience as the normal. So sigma minimum, maximum, I think one, something. So the point is there is no shear there. I think. Let's let's do this way. That's the correct in terms of new value. Let's see what our value. Eighty-four point sixty-four fifty-four. 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 Say like. Mm -hmm. the, point, yeah, the important point is that's why just 8.68 degrees counterclockwise there is no shear in our either push or pull and then if you just look at the nature of, of the angle so as soon as we have our theta p we look at to the other sides from sample like by a 2 theta s plus 2 theta p makes a 90 degrees like here and if we already know what 2 theta p is we can easily calculate 2 times theta s 72.65 and it just gives us a theta s theta for shear is equal to 36.33 degrees so you can easily see it just gives us a clockwise rotation like what you can see here it just makes us to gives us to a element like with the maximum shear which is equal to r maximum shear which is equal to r and that's a 69 64 so definitely there is a negative 50 this plane it's a negative so that's the theta is equal to 8.68 at 36.3 degrees so if we just know what our theta is and theta p is we can easily show them the point is in plane of theta s you can have no like what you can see here there is a 50 distance from origin to c that gives us a negative 15 which is sigma average and the maximum she which is equal to r radius of our more circle but in theta s you have no shear in, in theta p is no shear so let's 
so dissolve. Maximum shear, as you can see here, is for this point. Also, you can consider even bottom one. And for theta p is the maximum maximum plane of principal stresses like sigma, minimum, sigma, maximum. Thank you.